Good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody's having a good day. Um, welcome to the Child Nutrition End of the Year webinar. This webinar is being recorded, so we are able to post it on the website for later use. Um, if you have any questions, you can put those in the Q&A box, um, and we'll get to those at the end of the presentation. Thank you all for being here. So happy end of the year. I hope it's been a good year for everybody. I can't believe we're already in June at, at the end. Um, it seemed to go by so fast. Summer is coming. Um, we, Kate will finish up the applications um, and they need to be in by the 6th. Um, thank you all for the extra hard work it's taken for this year with the new non-congregate for breakfast for summer. Um, please let us know if you have any kickoff events or spike events, we would love to come and see them. Hot Lunch Summer is live and after the deadline, we'll get those, we'll send in the main sites um, to be uploaded. This year, they will di differentiate between the con congregate and the non-congregate sites by color. So you can check those out. Um, but it is live and you can see the other states. So in a week or two, you'll be able to see Maine. And thank you all for working with Kate to get that done. Turn Up the Beat is an award for summer meals. If anybody has a summer meal site, an outstanding summer meal site, um, you can apply for recognition through the USDA um, to Turn Up the Beat. You can apply for somebody or nominate for somebody, or you may self-nominate. Um, so it's a fun way to get recognized for all the work you're doing. So consider nominating someone or not self-nominating for the Turn Up the Beat Award. A few deadlines wanted to remind you all about. The June claims are open. Um, and they are due and by July 8th. Um, but if you finish early um, and you want to get those June claims in, feel free. Um, it is open for you to use. The CEP deadline is June 30th. If you are choosing to apply for a CEP for the upcoming school year, David needs that information to him by June 30th, including the application um, signed by the superintendent. The school nutrition program annual application is due on August 15th um, and your annual financial reports are due on September 1st. So just a few deadlines to keep in mind as you're closing up. A couple of back to school annual requirements, um, just to remind you that civil rights is an annual requirement. The new procurement training is an annual requirement and don't forget to do your yearly press releases. Don't forget that we're not doing those anymore um, and that you need to do them on a local level. So just a little reminder there. Wanted to make sure that you are all aware of the webinar that's happening on Thursday, June 20th from two to three. This is the USDA webinar that goes over the new expanded geographic preferences. Um, in farm to school. So I wanted to make sure that was on your calendars um, so we can hear what they have to say about that new option that was changed in the final rule. So please put that on your calendars. I just recently learned of a bulk, bulk milk grant through the Chef Ann Foundation um, that is due on June 27th, if you're interested in maybe trying some bulk milk um, at your bigger schools, maybe your older schools, um, an option for you to be able to get some funds to be able to do that. So that is again from the Chef Ann Foundation, um, if you're interested in that. Is everybody keeping up? 
Sunbox, I hope this information that was sent out to you was helpful and informative. Um, the first, the notice of decisions was sent out in the beginning of May. Um, first payments will go out the end of June. Families who did not receive a notice of decision may apply um, and they can do that through August 15th. We would prefer that they fill out an application with the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, and that is on their website. So on the OFI website, which is the Office of Family Independence under DHHS. These links were in the documents that we sent to you earlier. Um, and I hope that they were helpful um, in any questions that you might have gotten from the families. Again, families can still apply until August 15th, but that's a hard deadline of August 15th. Um, for, meal, for schools that are participating in traditional meal service, the updated free and reduced meal application has, is posted on our website. And for CEP and Provision 2 schools, the economic status form has been updated also. The eligibility guidelines are up, but not the reimbursement. So the eligibility guidelines are up, but not the reimbursement amount. We're still waiting on those. So we'll see what those look like when they come out. Medicare demonstration project. So we have applied to participate in the Medicare demonstration project. This will mean that Department of Health and Human Services will be able to streamline certify students for school meals by using verifiable main care data. And they'll be able to do this for both free and reduced students. Not all students who get main care will be able to receive school meals. So it's important that you don't accept main care numbers on your free and reduced applications for those that are doing direct, um, traditional meal service. Um, but we, uh, you, should, you will see that information come on the direct cert list starting July. So we'll be able to see those. Free and reduced students will be marked on this, the direct start list. Reduced students will not count towards CEP or Special Division II, but they will count for reduced meals. So I'm going to do a training session at the MSNA conference in, at Sugarloaf in August. Um, so be sure to be there to um, learn how to manage that list a little bit. But it's great news. Vermont did it last year and they saw a 15, 20% increase in the amount of kids on their direct star list. So I think this will really help all the districts um, for more than just school meals. So really excited to be able to offer this to you guys. We have another new and exciting project that's gonna be kicking off this year, our main regional local foods project. Um, Katie and Stephanie are kicking this off and we're gonna be able to offer um, coordinators in each of the regional school school areas um, to help bridge the gap between schools and farmers. So depending on what the region needs, they can help with schools and help with recipes or help with culinary, or if you need to help have them help you with farmers, they can go out, talk to farmers, figure out what they're growing and how they need to use it or how much they can offer up at a time. Um, and really just to help bridge that gap, figure out what you need in your regions. Um, the first year we're gonna do Western Maine, Oxford, Androscoggin and Franklin counties, York, Washington and Hancock and Aroostook. So more to come with that, but I'm really excited to be able to offer that additional assistance for you guys in each of the regions. 
couple of fall dates to remember. Put them on your calendar. Main harvest week is September 16th to 20th. Really hope that you can put some local foods on your menus for September when we have so much of this local stuff available for us. Really exciting time to be able to use local. Farm to school month is the month of October. And national school lunch week is October 14th through 17th. And we're also going to be able to celebrate that event when we have our fall info meeting on October 17th. So just a few dates to put on your calendars. I wanted to remind everybody about, uh, about the recognition awards, the healthy meals incentives. We have a couple already in our state. Um, but I know you guys are already doing all this stuff um, above and beyond um, doing stuff with breakfast and with lunch um, and doing culturally diverse meals and meal preparation. Would really love to see you get recognized for the work that you're already doing. Um, they have streamlined the application, so it's much easier from what I hear. Um, so I would really want to encourage you guys to to put in for this recognition award um through the grant for this we've had multiple schools get funds um and the recognitions rsu 89 was one of the first four to be recognized for hmi and brand new today um rsu 87 and eastern schools were both recognized um, one for breakfast and one for lunch, Trailblazer Awards. So congratulations to you guys. So happy that you did the application. Love that you're doing what you are for your schools. Um, and would really encourage anybody to fill out the application. Um, the picture in on the slide is last week we were up in 89 with the USDA and from the Department of Ed. Um, so we went up to celebrate their award and hope to do it in your region also. So the big thing that's coming up for us is our new final rule for the school meal standards. There's a lot of changes that are coming up within the next three years, um, but they have been good to phase in um, a lot of these changes. And we'll do a lot more of this training at the fall info meeting but I really did want to highlight the things um, that were that are going to be implemented starting July first. So I wanted to really bring those to the top of the pile, um, so that you could really be sure that you are all set for for July for September. So in whole grains, they maintained the current whole grain standard. Um, they did add a definition of whole grain rich. Um, but the standards still remain the same. So check that box. Sodium, they maintain the sodium targets for 1AA, um, and they will hold that for lunch through June of 2027. At Once June of 2027 hits, um, the sodium reduction will be a 15% percent reduction in school lunch and a 10 percent reduction in school breakfast so definitely be thinking of ways to you can kind of reduce that um, there will be tools coming from the usda um, so we're waiting to kind of see what those look like um, but know that those end yeah that will need to meet those regulations by 2027 and I think manufacturers are already really starting now um, to help us with those. Um, they have allowed um, for you to be able to offer a grain or meat meat alternative for breakfast or a combination of the both. So starting in July of this year, you can start substituting a meat meat alternate for a grain at breakfast. 
you are also able to substitute vegetables for fruit at breakfast. And this is for July 1st, 2024 as well. Really giving you guys some leeway. Beans, peas, and lentils at lunch. This allows for you to credit the vegetable component for the week with your beans, peas, and lentils. Um, so a nice, piece of nice flexibility for you when you're incorporating that. The rule also finalized the proposal to allow you to credit 100% of your meat meat alternate component with nuts and seeds if you would like to do that. I think that would be great for your super snacks or um, any of your um, side meals. It would be great. In competitive foods, they're going to allow you to use bean dip with the exception um, for the fat content in super snacks. So that will start July 1st. It is going to professional standards. It's going to eliminate that hiring exception that you need a bachelor's or an associate's degree to run a program. So you can do that. You can be hired to do that as long as you have 10 years of school nutrition program experience. Um, so that's a nice flexibility for somebody who's been in the program or has worked in the department for a long time. For meal modifications, they are going to allow for state licensed healthcare professionals to be able to request the meal modifications um, in July of 2024, and then expand that authority to register dietitians um, for the upcoming year, July of 2025. I hope that this will make it easier for you guys to get that meal modification filled out by somebody who is gonna completely fill out the form for you. The milk milk substitutes aren't changing. They have changed the way they're measuring it. So they're gonna change it from international units to micrograms um, for labeling requirements. So they're not changing what it is. They're just changing the way you measure it. And that also starts in July. They have added the option to consider adding locally grown, locally raised, and locally caught to the procurement specifications. So that's what that geographic preference is referencing um, in that webinar that's coming up on the 20th. By American, I think this might be something that we're going to need to work on. The biggest part of this is that it's going to require school food authorities to maintain documentation showing that they did not exceed the non-domestic food purchases limits. But the limits don't start until 2025. So this gives you a year to kind of figure out how you're going to do this and to be able to start tracking anything that's a non-domestic food product um, and track it within the schools. And then starting in 2025, we're going to need to measure it um, on your total purchases. So start thinking about this um, and how it's going to apply to you and how is the easiest way for you to track it for yourselves. And then I think the last of the changes is the terminology change, that they're going to ch change legumes, bees, and peas to beans, peas, and lentils. Um, and they're going to start doing that in July also. I wanted to remind everybody of the wonderful training opportunities that you have in the state, the Farm and Seed to School Institute, um, and the culinary skills for school meals training. Both of these happen over the summer and both of them are completely full. 
um, for this school year, but I would encourage anybody um, to join them. Um, these are wonderful opportunities for districts across the state to be able to take advantage of these two training opportunities. So I wanted to make sure that people were aware that they happened um, and that you could participate as a district. I hope to see you all at ANC in Boston. It's gonna be a wonderful time um, and you'll be able to see lots and lots of products. There'll be a ton of training you can hit every option for training that they have. Um, they offer a ton um, and you'll see thousands and thousands of people that do what you do. And it's a wonderful opportunity to have it in Boston and only a train or a bus ride away. So I hope you're taking advantage of that. And if I don't see you there, I hope to see you at the main conference at Sugarloaf on August 6th and 7th. So that's it for me. Uh, I'll hang around and take questions if anybody has anything and they can put it in the Q&A box. I've brought my notes, so hopefully I can answer them. All right, go ahead, Paula. What do you got for me? All right, Jane. Is Sunbucks a single one-time payment to families? Yes, it is a single one-time payment of $120. All right, some clarification on the Medicaid students. So they will be on the DC list? Correct. They will be considered free? They will, it, they will, there is an option for free and an option for reduced. So the follow-up was, if so, why can't we use the number on applications? Because not everybody who receives Medicaid will qualify for free and reduced meals. Medicaid benefits, people can get Medicaid benefits all the way up to 300% of the poverty level, whereas from school meals, you get, a, it's 130 or 185%. So there's that whole hundred of percent of people who can't get the benefit or wouldn't qualify for the benefit. So they are going to verify the, the families that would qualify within the 185% of the federal poverty level. Where is the economic status form on your website? It's not on the school meals website. It's on the finance websites of DOE. And once we get this posted, you can use the link on this slide. What can you offer for veggies at breakfast besides potato? How about salsa? Salsa goes with eggs. You could offer carrots. Um, you could make a frittata and put different vegetables into your frittata. Um, that's some options. To clarify, if we serve bean chili, as long as it, is, as it has half a cup, it can count as our bean for the week in addition to meat, meat alternative for the day? Correct. With the hiring flexibility? Yes. Will they also lift the requirement, the degree requirement on the credentialing exam? Ooh, good question. I don't know. You might have to go to ANC to see that one. Will we have to track the Buy American? Yeah, we will have to track the Buy American. Has there been any communication with our vendors regarding this so they can help us identify those items? I have not done any communication with the vendors as of yet. Um, but it is definitely something that we can do, especially at the food shows coming up. And I think a lot of the manufacturers are aware because they are making manufacturing changes already. How do we know 
who qualifies on the DC list under Medicaid? It's going to be a new code. And I'm not quite sure what the code's going to be yet, but it's going to be a different code, no, code letter. Anybody have any more questions for me? Like I said, maybe a quick question that I can answer at Sugarloaf. I'm planning on doing a training session there. Hope to see you at ANC. And we'll get this webinar posted within the week within the week paula says all right i hope everybody has a great end of year um and enjoy your summer if you're not working and if you are maybe we'll see you around call us if you have those spike events we'd love to get out and see them all right have a good day everybody bye